If you're an Adobe Premiere Pro user, you probably ask yourself, why is it that there is no color management inside Adobe Premiere After Effects like there is inside DaVinci Resolve? And I got some good news for you. Now there is, and it's called Color Lab, Free Lab, and it takes only one click to get things color managed. The easiest way how to describe FreeLab is that it's a free version of ColorLab AI Color Engine. And this is an engine that is a little bit different than anything else on the market today. What is very important for you right now is to know that this engine supports more cameras than any other color management system. Apart from traditional professional cameras, it supports iPhone or filmic pro footage or Fuji cameras or anything else exotic that it's out there. But it is also able to work with material of an unknown origin. If you have some log material and you don't know what camera it was shot at, which happens, right? You can actually use a special format called log generic to get things to look right. If you work with film scans, if you work with archive footage, you can still use color management of FreeLab to get your looks to look right. Now, another thing which is really important for you to know is that it supports a new look format called XO1. This is different format than what 3D LUT used to be, and it's bound to replace 3D LUTs because it's much more powerful. Because an XO1 works on any camera, and it's parametric, so you can change it and adapt it if you want. And it's film native, which means that the look is described in a way how we used to make looks back in the day when we used to shoot on film and other analog formats. And on top of everything from ground up, an X01 was written so that it supports AI-driven workflows. So let me show you how to use color management inside Adobe Premiere and how to get your footage to look amazing in shortest possible time. Okay, give me a, here a free lab, right? So I just type in a search bar, the name of the effect, just free is enough. I get it straight away here and then I drop it onto my clip. And certainly like you'll find it in your work, in editing work, you end up working with various cameras and they all shoot in log and what it means is that you always need to go and find some lookup tables for that particular camera you know like to be able to you know make it look uh, nice in Rex and a 9. Well the good news is that you don't have to do that anymore you can forget about all these lots that you use for your cameras because um, FreeLab comes with almost any possible you know camera uh, preset out there and if it's not there I'll show you there is actually a special setting that you can use so you basically this is the list and you see is long it has a very you know lots of lots of cameras right and um, different options even an iPhone is here so I'm going to look what is this camera it says it is a C500 okay so C500 it's a Canon Log 3 Cinema so I just select that mode and bang I get correct you know, 709 output out of it, right? Now, what I can do from there, I can uh, basically still go and open my Lumetri color. And if I wanna make any changes, I can do so. So for example, I click here on my creative and then I click onto these color wheels. That's what I normally like to use. I can then adjust a little bit, you know, my, my, my mid-tone. I can, you know, maybe make it a little bit warmer if I like it, you know, I can, I, you know, like just do like a normal grading that you would normally do. However, one thing it's very important or, or it's, it's recommended, you know, it's going to work without it as well, but it's a recommendation it. When you start using Lumetri, right, it is actually going to apply Lumetri after the FreeLab. And that's not the correct order of processing. What you want to do is you want to take FreeLab and put it after the Lumetri plugin, or actually like this, right? So you should have a Lumetri color first and then FreeLab. Okay, this is better way of working because this way 
you are um, able to work what we call scene referred an original log image so these controls actually behave a little bit better as you can tell right and then the free lab basically you know rounds everything up and just give you like a little bit better results so so this is you know a very simple way how i was now able without any lookup tables anything boom just to get a really good result now as you probably know like you know we rarely you know edit material that is just from one camera so for example here i have an fx9 so what i do then is i can just go here to free lab you know drop free lab onto this clip and then I click into my effects controls and then I tell it in my profiles here I say hey uh, this is a Sony camera which is going to be shooting in S log 3 uh, S gamma 3 dot cine so it's there I click on it and then I have a perfect Rec Sena 9 from a Sony right um, so this is one way of how you can use it um, you know here I have some black magic camera you know but let's say I don't really know what camera it is I just got a clip and I can tell you know by looking at my scopes right that this is uh, some sort of you know a log camera because I can see that here there is nothing below you know what they call 10 percent you know so we call it 100 right so there is absolutely no value and I know it's then that usually indicates this is a log camera but I don't know which one it is so what you do in those situations is then you take um, free lab and then you drop it onto the clip right and then you go into effects controls and then in the profiles we have this profile which is called log generic you see this is log generic and you click on that profile and that is basically going to try to give you best possible kind of conversion so it really like you know allows you to 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 work with log material really well and then you can still go to lumetri color now I, I i i have to just go and again remember i have to make change the order so that Lumetri sits above perfect and then I'm gonna go and just quickly open up a little bit this shot like this and here I have you know perfect looking you know 709 and I even don't know what camera it is I do actually I know this is a black magic camera but something like this now here is an interesting example I want to show this is an iPhone and and you know on the first sight you could say okay it looks pretty good right well, actually, it's not looking very good because iPhone out of the box has got actually, you know, a lot of color information, you know, a little bit more than what we need because it has, you know, it's, it's anticipating, you know, this P3 color space. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drop here a free lab onto this iPhone clip and then in my effects controls, I'm going to go and say, hey, in my profiles, give me the iPhone SDR look so there is a basically setting iPhone 12 SDR it works for all the other versions of iPhone and you click on that and you see what it does it basically normalizes kind of you know this whole increased color gamut right and you now get an image that just feels more neutral more um you know like a, what what actually was captured it doesn't have this kind of you know hyper realistic kind of very saturated feel and i really really like that you know like you know so, so that way already like out of the box i can i can do it and later on i'm going to show you you know how i use it um you know for uh, when i'm working with hdr as well now here is another interesting thing uh, this is a drone footage right um, we know um, you know drone can be always a little bit difficult so for that what I'm using uh, is this setting so I apply free lab then I go into my profiles and then here I can I have we have a, like a DJI D log but because this is not shot on D log you see it, it's using full dynamic range I use actually this setting which is called sRGB right this setting and you'll see it's actually really kind of, you know, fixes, you know, this kind of, you know, opens the gamma a little bit and just allows you to, you know, get, you know, this uh, footage to just look a little bit better. You see, this is without it and this is with it. And it just really helps you to get your drone footage, you know, to fit better, you know, with the rest of the stuff. In general, you know, this is the advantage of color management and plugins like these, that they just bring everything kind of into some sort of ballpark. 
we started with just you know everything looking all over the place and now we have timeline you know looking how these and things you know it's super real time optimized it works you know perfectly and plays back on 4k clips multiple layers no problem at all if you like these videos don't forget to subscribe we're going to have more interesting videos like this coming up and also don't forget some of our full training courses we have just follow the link in the description of the video below